Hey class, it's Billberry here with an introduction to our CSC 142 class. Since we don't have an in-person orientation, this video will get you started. So let's jump in and look at what topics we'll cover today. First, we're going to answer a few common questions that you may have about the course, like what's going to be in it, is this something useful? Uh, also, is my instructor qualified? I know when you have a new instructor, sometimes you don't have any idea whether you're getting some bozo. So uh, while I can't convince you of that here, at least I'll give you a little bit of background to tell you there may be a chance you're okay. Also, let's talk about expectations. What do I expect from you? What should you expect? Uh, what do I expect you to do? What should you expect from me? Stuff like that. We will also look briefly at the course website and the syllabus. It's important that you understand these materials since we're working online. These are your key resources. We'll also then jump in and talk briefly about data types and the structure of a typical Java program and compiled and interpreted languages. Then we'll look at some of the course tools and we'll actually uh, not do some work together in this video, but I'll point you to videos that will start you getting that work done. Then we'll talk about what you need to do next and find out how you can get help. So all of these things are important and let's jump in and get them covered. First, what's in the course? This is a course that covers the fundamentals of Java. So we're going to look at basic Java syntax, and we're going to look at expressions and control structures, functions, algorithms, etc. Uh, also using objects and doing input from files output as well. That's coming a little bit later in the course. So a lot of this stuff is stuff that you did before in Python perhaps or some other language. So much of this stuff uh, at the beginning is going to be review and you're just going to be applying it to Java syntax. So that's not, uh, not anything terribly exciting. But you will be getting very familiar with Java, which is a good thing. <clears throat> and then we will move into a big section of the course that works on object-oriented programming. So then you will be creating objects yourself. We'll study inheritance, polymorphism, interfaces, uh, etc. Recursion really isn't part of object-oriented programming, but uh, there's a lot of topics that will be newer to you, and that will take up a good bit of the course. We'll spend a lot on objects, so good stuff there. One thing to be aware of is the projects for this course are significant. They are not tiny. They require planning on your part, they require design on your part, and they require a good bit of time. Some students are saying that they are spending about 15 hours a week on projects. That's not too unusual, especially for the more complex projects, which we'll get get into pretty quickly. So do plan on putting time aside and uh, don't don't worry that uh, your investment is about that. That's what other people are doing. This is your major I am imagining and so this is important for you to really get this stuff down. So in terms of prerequisites you are supposed to walk in with prior programming experience. You shouldn't have gotten in without c taking CSC 110 with us or doing something similar or proving that you have a background that it makes you uh, successful, uh, you know, set up for success. We want you to be successful in this course, and therefore we set this up, um, you know, as a prerequisite, so you walk in with some knowledge and you are prepped for success. The next thing is, am I learning something useful? Uh, this is a stack overflow graph of the popularity, the ranking of tags, uh, which you know, generally will equate to popularity, of different topics on Stack Overflow. You'll notice that JavaScript is very, very top of the current, you know, 2015 uh, current data, but very next is Java. Next is Android. So you'll notice that uh, out of the top several things, Java is very, very important in the way that these things are tagged. These are very relevant topics for today. So you are using a language, you're learning a language that is extremely popular in the world today. So you couldn't really make too much of a better investment in terms of job possibilities and knowledge than you're making here in Java. So don't worry, this is going to be useful to you. Next question, is my instructor qualified or am I walking into an online course with some bozo? Well, here's at least a little bit of an intro and I hope that this will uh, let you know that um, perhaps you'll be in good hands. I've taught on and off at North Seattle for many years, since the early 90s. Most recently it was programming, but before that I did te teach some apps like Excel and Outlook. For a while I taught the entire software testing program. But for a brief time there was a certificate in software testing and I, was, I developed and taught those courses. And before that I was teaching programming uh, way, way back. 
My education, I have a master's in software engineering from Seattle University. That was in 1995, and my undergrad was a bachelor of science in computer science business, and that's from my hometown, the University of Texas at El Paso in 1985. In terms of my job background, my main focus, uh, my main work was at Microsoft. I spent 15 years there as a software engineer and ended my last stint in May of 2015. But I have spent many years as a teacher, consultant, or instructor, either part or full time. <clears throat> and I've been teaching adults technical subjects for over 30 years. It's painful to imagine. I can't really be that old. I must have started when I was like two, right? So anyway, I've been doing this a long time and I really enjoy teaching and I hope that comes through even in online materials and our interactions that we have. So uh, ask around. Hopefully you'll find that, uh, that you get decent reviews from my previous students and current students, but I hope that you'll be in good hands and you'll get to say at the end whether you thought that was the case, but let's hope. All right, in terms of my promises, this is what I'm going to try to do during this course. First, I'm going to try to make the projects relevant. I hope that these are not stupid projects or completely toy projects. These actually have some relevance and they'll be interesting to you. Also, when it comes to exams, we will have written exams, but I will try to make these fair, but they will be challenging, right? They will demand that you study, they will demand that you that you, uh, you know, know your stuff, but they should be fair. You shouldn't uh, come out of there saying, wow, I didn't have any idea this would be on the exam. You should know exactly what's going to be there and find them fair. Also, I want to be fair and consistent in grading. I try to be to give you a lot of feedback and use tools to make sure that I'm being very consistent across students. So you will get uh, a grade back and you'll get a lot of feedback. So you'll get regular updates on, on each of those things, but also on your course grades. One thing to note is that Moodle is very good at telling you what you've done on any particular assignment, but for some reason it is not very good at calculating your overall course grades. So don't depend on that. I will post these on the website, on the course website, so you will find this. Uh, every time we turn in a project, I'll update this so you stay uh, very uh, up to date on where you are with your course grades. I will also try to be very responsive to your questions. If you send me email, I will typically respond within a couple hours. I can't promise that I'm always in a place where I can do that, uh, but very often I will get back to you very quickly. So I will try to be responsive to, uh, to your uh, questions and posts on forums and things like that when relevant. Also, I will try to make sure that I provide support materials. I've made a lot of videos to help you with this material. I'll post extra materials when I find it or if you request. Sometimes uh, students will ask for a, a, a specific video on a project or on a topic and I will make one on demand and post that for you. So those are some of the things that I will try to do. <clears throat> now let's look briefly at some of the things that I would hope you would do and these are my expectations of you. First of all, I expect you to turn in your own work. Other folks may guide you, other students or tutors may be uh, able to guide you, but they must not do the work for you. The work you turn in has to be yours, yours alone, and you have to be able to explain it all yourself. So it should be 100% work that you do and can support and understand. Also, my expectation is that you'll turn in the work when it's due. Uh, work is due on Fridays at 11.55 p.m. That's the time that we seem to have settled on in the past, and so that's when it is. Notice that it is not midnight. It is not 11.59. It's 11.55, so that you're completely sure of when the cutoff is. So I uh, expect that you do that. Now, there's going to be a, you know penalties and things like that, which you can decide if you just need more time and want to take the penalty. That's up to you. So I'm not going to hound you about that. But in general, uh, I don't want to see you lose points uh, by turning in late assignments, especially perpetually. There will never be enough extra credit to make up for perpetually late assignments. So you'll find that it's just best if you if you stay on top of things. Also, please turn in work that compiles. Sometimes students send in work that is incomplete and won't even compile, so I can't run my test code on it. I can't really get started with grading it when it doesn't even work. So please turn in work that compiles, and it doesn't just error out when I run it with the simple data that I've provided or, or t uh, sample files that you give me. You should give me work that is of decent quality and well tested by the way that's coming in a few assignments and I'll expect testing to be part of your part of your coding also you can use algorithms that you find in other spots but please 
only use them if you can fully understand and explain the concepts that they use. In general, you shouldn't need to do this. Your book and the materials that I provide with videos should give you everything you need to do the work here. You should not have to go to the internet. If you do that, you're probably missing some fundamental concept that you could uh, make your life simpler by using. So, but if you do, you need to understand the, the algorithms that you pick up and what they're, what they're all about. Also, please don't share whole projects or view projects that other people, you know, or other people have done. This really doesn't benefit you in the long run. If your goal is only to get the grade, then you're kind of in trouble anyway. Uh, your goal ought to be to deeply understand these concepts and be able to be ready for them when they are presented in a job interview, to be able to think on your feet, think through these things, and put yourself to these challenges. So please don't share or view projects from others. Also, I would uh, request and I expect that you will do a course evaluation at the end of the quarter. It helps me to be a better teacher and to refine this course over time and it lets our dean know whether they're making the right, uh, she's making the right decisions in terms of hiring part-time instructors. So please do that course evaluation when asked at the end. All right. Let's move on then. We are going to take a look at the course syllabus and the website. We do use for this course the learning management system called Moodle and so you will need to go to moodler.northseattle.edu and once you do that uh, you will find courses listed there and you'll find our course and then you will enroll in it using this course key that's listed on this slide. So you'll use the course key CSC 142 SPR 16 Barry and that will let you get into the course and then I will see you as a participant. You should do that right away. The next thing we're going to do is look briefly at the Moodle site and also at the course syllabus but since this video is getting long I'm going to stop it here and then we'll do a, a continue on with a second video because I'd like these to be you know 10-12 minutes at max. So thanks for watching so far. Keep watching and we'll go over some more uh, important materials for orientation very next. Thanks.